in preparing this most important of lakeside ceremonies. We make sure that students' voices and perspectives are an integral, essential component of the ceremony. The work that we do here at Lakeside, really the only work, is to provide young people with the most authentic, challenging, and inspiring educational opportunities that we can. The class of 2011 has taken every advantage of those opportunities. And it is now my great pleasure to introduce Weston Gaylord, chosen by his classmates to speak on behalf of the class of 2011. First, let me say how honored and pleased I am to be given the chance to speak to you here. Class of 11, I thank you so much for your support and trust. Three moments of transition occurred recently in my life. The first happened at the end of a canoeing trip with the Quest class. After 17 idyllic days of paddling down the Green River, the roaring riverboat arrived to take us and our gear back to Moab. And as we turned up the canyons, I had a strange feeling of rewinding, of passing back through the trip far too quickly, and it made me deeply uneasy. The second was a comment made on a sunny afternoon. A few weeks ago, sprawled on the grass with a few other seniors, one friend commented on her inability to comprehend how much Lakeside had become a part of her. It's like how you can't taste your own saliva, she said. <laughs> I realized this was disturbing, but true. <laughs> and I started to think about how much of Lakeside's influence was invisibly part of me. And the last was a milestone, the last class of high school. Last Wednesday, as the bliss clock struck three, there were some cheers and smiles as we congratulated each other on finishing high school. But at that moment, I didn't feel particularly joyful. And as I wandered away across campus that afternoon, I realized it was because I didn't understand what the moment meant. The prospect of saying goodbye to seven years at Lakeside and looking towards something entirely new was too big for me to fully comprehend. Those three moments have been percolating in my head for the last few days. And as I began to think about what I wanted to say here, I kept coming back to transitions and why we celebrate them. And as I was trying to gather my thoughts, I happened upon the words of a man gifted with the wisdom I lack. There is a place where the sidewalk ends, wrote Shel Silverstein, and before the street begins, and there the grass grows soft and white, and there the sun burns crimson bright, and there the moon bird rests from his flight to cool in the peppermint wind. I think the poem's not just about a paradise behind the choking urban grime. It's about that moment of transition we experience every day, stepping off the sidewalk, where the sidewalk ends and before the street begins, that moment of limbo as we leave the safety and comfort of the sidewalk and step out into the busy street. There's a moment of soft, bright peace between the two, where we pause for a moment to watch the cars whir past and think about the future. And I believe that's where we are at this very moment, on this peaceful afternoon, sitting here with wistfulness and expectation, reflecting and projecting, hesitating for a moment on the edge of the sidewalk. That was a long block, we're thinking to ourselves. But now we finally reach the street. And the question lingering on my mind is, why is it important to hesitate? What is it about that moment between sidewalk and street, frying pan and fire, safety and surprise, or childhood and adulthood that's worth writing a poem about? Why do we take this time to look back instead of rushing back up the river like that cacophonous motorboat? And the answer, as far as I can tell, is because it makes both the street and the sidewalk mean a little more. Because to properly take leave of Lakeside, we have to understand and try and remember 
what it has made us. We've transformed unbelievably from stressed out, wide-eyed, still adjusting freshmen to calm, comfortable, experienced seniors. We still don't know everything. The adjusted B schedule still eludes us all. And it won't be long before we're stressed out, wide-eyed, still adjusting freshmen again. But our time at Lakeside will stay with us. And taking this time to think back helps us understand that. Let's consider for a moment. Without recalling the time we have spent in class reading, discussing, calculating, debating, titrating, taking notes, passing notes, powerpointing, power napping, being confused and being astonished. Without that, how can we measure the worth of the knowledge we gain in the next stage of our lives? Without fondly remembering afternoons spent on this grass in the sun, eating, chatting, playing frisbee, playing bocce, playing hooky, taking time out of stuffed schedules to spend a moment doing nothing. Without that, how will we appreciate future moments of bliss? Without acknowledging the issues we've sometimes encountered, crushing stress, sleepless nights, drama, near impossible problems, despair, depression, all of the petty and mighty weights which can weigh upon high schoolers, how will we know that we can deal with these things when we encounter them again in the future? Finally, without the memory of radiant friendships with students and teachers, movie nights and pizza nights, team bonding, exhausting practices, cheering sidelines, cast parties, beach parties, pump-up chants, thoughts shared wordlessly between glances, spontaneous hugs, split your sides laughter, without the memory of what was undoubtedly the finest thing about my time at Lakeside, sharing it with you. Well, without that, life would be pretty empty, wouldn't it? Last Wednesday afternoon, after my last class of high school, I realized I didn't fully understand what it meant to graduate from Lakeside. And I still don't. But that afternoon, I also realized that it doesn't have anything to do with tallying or quantifying the experience. That's the riverboat approach, drowning out significance with a roaring motor. Instead, I suspect that meaning will slowly creep up on us in a number of small ways. In college, as I stop to chat with a professor after a class and get involved in a fascinating discussion, or as I cheer on a buddy at a concert, or a photography show, or a lacrosse game, or as I walk into a dorm in September and wonder who my first friends will be. In those moments, I will remember and be strengthened by Lakeside. Our time here will be present in the way we perceive and appreciate the world, part of every one of us, just like saliva. And we take this time for reflection in order to celebrate that. So if there's any wisdom to be had from this stew of nostalgia and cliché, it is this. Shell tells us that it is the children who know the place where the sidewalk ends. As we leave Lakeside, I hope that we retain that childlike willingness to grow and change that has served us so well here, and that we will always remember to take the time to pause and reflect and look both ways before crossing the street. To the class of 2011 and to Lakeside, thank you for some amazing years. Thank you for this honor. Thank you.